From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello everyone, I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. The 111th Tennessee General Assembly convenes for the first time in early January, but its leadership is already being chosen. Last week, Williamson County Representative Ken Cassidy won a three-way battle to become the Republican nominee to be the new Speaker of the House. Given the GOP's supermajority, he is a shoe-in to be elected when the legislature begins its work. Soon to be Speaker Cassidy is our guest on Inside Politics. Uh, Mr. Speaker, if I can use that word, welcome to the program and Thank congratulations. You. Thank you, Pat, and I'm honored to be here. This is one of the, the foundational shows for political inside information for Nashville. I hope you know that. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, you ran for Speaker unsuccessfully eight years ago. I now did. that you're about to become Speaker, is this sort of the fulfillment of a, maybe a dream you had even from when you first came to the, to the legislature back in the 90s? You know, I, it's more like, um, it's, just, it, it's, it's just an honor. Uh, you have, uh, in this case, 73 of my, my peers have nominated me for this leadership spot to lead the house for them and with them and so I'm just honored and humbled. Uh, you had a three-way race for this uh, was it as testy as rumor had it between the three of you to try to get support? It really wasn't. New members? Yeah no it really wasn't. Uh, uh, all three of us uh, David Hawk, Curtis Johnson, myself very cordial. Uh, we There was to my knowledge nothing that was negative or, or backbiting if you would and so uh, a very good race. Is everybody together on the same page? Your leadership team, which has now been chosen by the caucus and yes. will we'll go forward, and y'all, everybody's together to move forward for the legislature. We are, Pat. We've met. Uh, I've met with. I've talked and met with David. I've talked and met with Curtis, uh, the new leadership caucus team, and we are we are on the same team. How will you be the same or dissimilar from Beth Harwell, who who you will replace as speaker once you're elected in January? Will you, for example, will you continue her policy of mandating sexual harassment training? Yes. Every yes. year from members. Yes. Yeah, that will be that will be done on the House floor uh, right uh, after we do our ethics training. Uh, Beth did some many, many great things for Tennessee, and one of them was this transparency and openness. And and I will continue to emulate that 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 she did. The governor's talking about Governor Elect Lee is talking about doing that in the area of records. Is that something you also would support looking at, making sure we're not closing too we many do. public records? I tell you, Pat, it's it's so important that government is open to those that put us there. Transparency in government records, record keeping. Uh, bids, contracts, yes. Um, your caucus members, on the day you were chosen, you told your caucus members that you plan to support them as incumbents when they seek re-election. Yes. Is that yes. unconditional no matter what happens yes. over the next two years? Yes. Now, obviously, if someone violates the law, then that's, that needs to be, uh, to be so without saying. But uh, there, these are those 73 individuals on the Republican side are hardworking, intelligent individuals, and I will support them in their re-election. You're talking about appointing more subcommittees. Now, usually that's yes. where legislation goes to die. So yes. why do you want to do that? Is this to get rid of more legislation more quickly? No, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> no, and, and I, I wanted to be clear in my, in my speech to the caucus. It's, it's a place where good bills are made better. It's, it's subcommittees are composed of a small number of people who are experts in that subject, and they'll do the deep dive. Having more subcommittees, it lets you have more chairman, which probably helps you since you've got lots of new people that probably would like to get into leadership that way. You know, yes, but that's a secondary. The primary, it, it allows more people to be, as the slang goes, at the table, to be involved and intimately involved. Does having more subcommittees also <coughs> mean you might make a change or re remove the limit on bills that Speaker Harwell put in a few years ago, that the lawmakers can only introduce so many bills per session? Okay, and, and as you pointed out, Beth had 15 bills per member. I, I personally like that, but that's a decision that the House will come up with and and so we will bring yeah, a but your recommendation will play a, a, lot, a lot to it, do it that. will it will and, and unless someone can convince me otherwise I do like the 15 bill a third education committee I think Speaker Harwell started out she used to just be one then she went to two what why do we need a third one and what would be the difference in their oversight and, and who would they what bills would they look after what we're doing right now we're having our chief clerk go through and analyze bills by and, and by number on subject and so we, we will see we we will see on the area of education, but a subcommittee is a subunit of a full committee. And so that's what we're looking at. Do you have any particular legislative priorities you have for the entire House coming up for this year? You know, uh, number one, we, we want to maintain the trajectory that we're on. A successful, economically prosperous Tennessee, which means low taxes, limited government. Uh, we want to continue the uh, excellence we're doing in education. Uh, but I have met with Governor Lee, and, and we need to address mental health. 
uh, and we need to uh, address vocational education as well as academic education. You made some comments, uh, I think, on the again today you were nominated about wanting to have the House be more involved yes. in the exact budget process. Uh, yes. the, the governor said he had not heard about that. Have you two yes. talked? Are you in accord for what? And what exactly would the House do with having more involvement in the budget? And and, and so we have spoken. And and uh, what what I see the House doing is as the budget is unfolded, uh, the committee that oversees that part of the budget would have a sit down, a deep dive, and look at their part of the budget and make recommendations back to the governor. So again, the people's body intimately involved in the budget process. Have you spoken with and met with Lieutenant Governor McNally, the Speaker of the Senate? What's been your past relationship with him and what will it be going forward? We've had a very good relationship. I served as majority leader in the past. He was Lieutenant Governor. Uh, before that, he was Finance Chairman and I was in House Leadership. So we've worked intimately and well together for years. Sometimes late in the session in particular, the two houses sort of get to be squabbling like uh, like siblings. Um, anything or any ideas you have about how to keep those lines of communication open so that we don't get into that later in the spring when both sides kind of wind up taking hostages, bills hostage from yes. each other? Yes, and, and Pat, that's a good point. Uh, and let me say, self-government is messy and it's cumbersome but it's good and so it's good for us to argue debate and then we always come up with the best after we argue and debate. Uh, passing bills in one house is only half the process. Yes. You've got to pass it through the other one as well. Yes. Have you talked enough with Speaker McNally to know whether your legislative priorities and his are roughly on the same page? Roughly is a good term uh, and, and it's not only as you know that the Speaker of the House is the titular head but you've got budget chairmen and you've got majority leaders and caucus chairmen so it's a full unit and a full team and so yes our house leadership team will work well with the Senate. But as far as you know the Republican supermajority goes in united because generally speaking over the last several years if something didn't get passed it's usually because there was a division among the Republicans. Yes that is exactly right we are three quarters of, of in the House and the Senate and so uh, again you've got rural and you got rural Republicans, suburban Republicans and urban Democrats and so it's an interesting paradigm those three those three groups. Do you think there's a way for those groups to all work together? I, I mean, do. Even, even though they're supposed to have different party labels. We do and, and you will quite quite often see maybe 95 percent of the time things pass almost unanimously. Now, there's a few things that the, that the groups will disagree on but it's a healthy process of debate. There appears to be a record number of lawmakers and major changes in leadership in both houses coming up. Uh, there is. Combined with the new governor and his new administration and new commissioners, do you expect it to take some time for everybody to get oriented up there and for things to actually get off to a, the, its normal start up there? Now, you have a little bit more time. You have the organizational session. We do. Then you have probably about a month before you come back and even longer than that before the yes. governor comes in to make his first state of the state and budget. So so uh, we'll, we'll gavel in on the 8th, 9th, and 10th, organize. We'll recess to the 19th, uh, have inauguration, and then we'll, we the House will come back on the 28th of February, uh, excuse me, January, and uh, we're going to push ahead. And, and just like we have years past, late April is kind of our target date to be to be done. Speaker, to be uh, uh, um, Glenn Cassidy is our guest on Inside Podcast. I know his name. I just <laughs> blanked it for a second. Um, back to continue our conversation with the speaker to be after this break.